Customer Engine Build. This is a Lingerfelder 383 LT1 Rebuild. This is uh, what I'm calling number 112. It's for Scott White. And it's a Lingenfelter engine that uh, the customer gives Lingenfelter the engine and they rebuild it to the specs. So it's got a real nice Cali's crank inside. It's a 383. So this basically needs a rebuild. The pistons were damaged and melted. What I do initially is take pictures of all the outside. Help me remember in the future if, uh, if I forget where parts go, especially up on the intake manifold, the EGR and the charcoal canister purge solenoids. They're different between a Corvette and the F body and the B bodies. So, especially um, that anyway. There is a rear main seal that has almost fallen out. Uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. I took the flex plate off and then uh, the rear main seal looked like it was already taken apart. Intake manifold looks like it was ported. Port matched by Lingenfelter. Looks good underneath it. Then the intake valley and the cylinder heads and the notice it's stock push rods. So I thought that was pretty interesting. They work. Anyway, there's some uh, Gliptol or painted intake valley, which helps actually to uh, keep maybe some sand from the block casting from uh, rumbling and falling out and it also helps oil drain back. Cylinder heads, they're still in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of uh, aluminum and detonation pitting, but they're still in okay shape. They're gonna get refurbished by Dennis staff at FastCat Porting Service. The uh, cylinder heads were CNC ported by Lingenfelter. And the cylinder head, the short block, the pistons, there are two of them. You can visibly see they've melted through number five and number six. The others look to be okay, but we'll see later. They're not in, in good shape. The lifters look like stock lifters, but they're in good shape, just worn a little bit. All of them were in uh, reusable conditions. A real nice ATI damper, and there is a picture of the crankshaft, uh, the nose, it helps me know what the serial number is for the records. I wanted to see how far the pistons were in the hole and they're about 15 thou down. And so it looks like the block was just slightly decked. The oil pan, that's a stock oil pan. I like how Lingenfelter used that and they just kind of pushed out the bottom of the pan so that the rods could clear. And that's the same thing I do. There's the inside of the pan and that's some aluminum debris from the pistons. They used a uh, Melling 155 oil pump, and that's one of my favorite oil pumps. It's basically a standard small block Chevy oil pump with a three quarter inch pickup. Note though that they used a stock timing set, which is quite appropriate if you've got an all natural motor. They used Cali's crankshaft. It's a, not a Dragon Slayer, that's a Magnum crankshaft. And the custom JE piston there, those were definitely custom, that's not a shelf item. There's a picture of the M155 oil pump, one of my favorites. And now we're looking at the pistons, that's probably number five. It burned right on through. And then the uh, pieces and parts from the aluminum that off-gassed get stuck to the side of the block. But the rod journals are in good shape. The crankshaft ended up being in good shape. So the CC of the cylinder head uh, combustion chamber volume that ended up being 61 cc's. So I'm gonna say, give or take a half a cc. The other piston, number six, not in good shape. Okay, so I wanted to see what the volume of that piston was, just curious, and it was six cc's. It's a very, very close to a flat top. Picture of the, the uh, burette, and it was blurry. Hey, how did that picture get in there? That's my uh, race car with my 383. I just wanted to uh, show that, because it happened to be in the same file. So now I'm 
Finishing the disassembly of the bottom end and there's all the pistons kind of laid out there. We're going to see each of them one by one here. Number eight. There's a cracked ring land there. The second ring land's all cracked, so not visible from the top. And there's number six, which is definitely burned through. Number four, cracked ring lands. Two of them. Number two, nothing cracked. That one survived. All right, so now the other side, number seven. Busted up ring lands. It's almost pushed and deformed. Number five, that one's the visible burn through. It was number five and number six that burned through. And here's number three. Looks like it survived. Its ring lands are good. And number one, the ring lands are good also. So there were three that survived out of the eight. All the others were busted up. The rest of the pictures are going to be of disassembling the bottom end. They, this engine used stocked uh, mains. And I did want to show a picture. I'm glad that they used uh, plugs up front with oil weep holes. The crankshaft, again, 57468 is the serial number of that crankshaft. That's for my records. There's the stock mains again and the Cali's crankshaft. Crank's coming out. The, the main bearings, they looked fine. They, so the crankshaft was not pounding the uh, the bearings or the detonation did not cause the bearings to get busted up but there's typical dirt from the uh, the damage and I was surprised to see that they don't really massage the uh, main oil galleys or holes I guess and the last picture that's the steel bearing ball bearing that separates the oil galleys I use that if I can also shout out to Lingenfelter I've always admired the quality of their engines and and their work it's just it's a pleasure to be able to work with uh, at least see and have in my hands an engine that was built by one of the best i can learn a lot from it this is carl elwine elwine engines take care mm -hmm.